to the course, Disaster Recovery and Build Back Better. My name is Ram Satish. I am an assistant professor in Department of Architecture and Planning, IIT Roorkee. Today, we are going to discuss about how to teach disaster recovery and build back better in built environment education. So, this lecture is being prepared based on my own experiences for about two decades, how I have been involved both as a student and as a faculty in different cultural and uh, environmental setups. So, how disaster has been integrated in the curriculum, in the education and the methods which were adopted and in fact, some of uh, the courses which were actually executed by me and where I keep testing different methods of how to teach the disaster risk reduction and build back better for the built environment professionals, especially for architecture and planning students in uh, India, UK, Mediterranean countries and in Sweden. So that has given me a, a good exposure of working in temperate climates and the tropical climates, Mediterranean climates and the Arctic climates. So uh, I keep testing various tools and methods in teaching this DRR. So I am trying to bring a kind of uh, concise um, understanding of what I have implemented and what I have learned through that. So before that I will give you a brief theoretical understanding of the educative component of it, the education component of it and uh, how it is relevant in the architectural phenomenon and how, especially in the present age how it is drastically changing and what are the threats and as a result how this DRR has to be looked into it in the built environment education. When we start about architecture or planning or urban design, any of these studies which are related to the built environment orientation. In the past, we mostly have talked about the monumentality of the architecture, you know, whether it is uh, a Vatican City Plaza, whether it is Jumo, you know, the Brunelschild's work. So, the great architects, the great master builders who have actually made these spaces to happen and that is what we all studied about architecture. And in fact, when we were studying these architectural courses, there are different segments of uh, the training starting from your design component and as well as the construction component, the structural component, the service component and the historical component. So, somehow we end up studying in most of an isolated manner like each component in a different aspect. So, there is always a need to integrate and how we apply the learning of this to that. So, this is the missing component and if you take ahead from the historical times of architectural understanding where people used to work under the master builder and that is how they learned architecture. But coming into the modern era where uh, the Frank Lloyd Wright or Louis Kahn, you know, people that is again, it is a kind of apprenticeship how they learn from these masters, learning from masters. Even Bauhaus, you know, that has, that is just not a school of thought, it is a vision, right. So, that is what uh, Louis Kahn states, schools began with a tree, with a man under a tree, who did not know he was a teacher, discussing his realizations with a few, who did not know they were students. So, this is a very intimate relationship which he brings up and as a result of this interaction, the architectural apprenticeship or the student, he tried to test a few ideologies and then come to a particular decision making process. So, that is where this whole education is unlike the engineering subject which happens in a classroom. We uh, as an architects and the planners, we deal with the real situations and the psychological aspects of it and the behavioral aspects of it and the financial, there is a various dimensions which are involved in the uh, built environment studies. So, that is where this kind of training has been followed upon and Louis Kahn talks about this idea of an individual communicating to several individuals who after due deliberations accept the ideas only when these are found acceptable through the process of checks and counter checks over a period of time intelligently, sensually 
and the level of performance the generating patterns of life and living so this is all about the trade and error process of how you develop this idea and how you communicate this idea and how you check this how you counter check this and how you see how it has been experiencing it how it is behaving what is the responsive pattern of it how people are responding to it you know that is how the learning process happens when we talk about an architecture study we mostly orient our students into the building orientation but one has to understand that the building is not just an objectified form of an architecture it is also the cultural setting you know the cultural setting which makes an important contribution in understanding giving meanings to that place like for instance you called about the jean marie uh, jibao cultural center uh, ranjo piano which talks about an ecological setting and the tribal understanding and how bringing that into the architectural aspects and similarly when we talk about uh, the post independent architecture where chandigarh planning of the chandigarh where western philosophies have come and worked in an indian with a modern vis vision and uh, the visions for democracy and equal opportunities and how the method of working and how they have understood the site and how they have understood so this is all a transition process in the the way the architecture have understood with the community have dealt with the communities and uh, earlier it was very singular process but now um, it has gradually changed from a singular to the shared visions when we talk about the shared visions in fact uh, today we are talking about many important courses like urban design or architecture masters but you see way back in uh, early uh, 19th century and 1850s uh, liverpool which have started the civic design courses even today this particular course do exist so that is where they talk about bringing the stakeholders into the design process in the planning process so this is very important that we have to move from a singular vision to a shared vision because many at times they notice that the singular vision process have failed apparently and one has to look into and take into the account of different user groups the stakeholders the decision making authorities in the process in our present context in the globalized so if we look at the time frame of how our society have moved at least from india what amin srinivas talks about from the sanskritization to the westernization and to the colonization and to the modernization industrialization and to the modernization and now today we are living in the globalization but still the gap between the rich and the poor is ever increasing you know there's a challenges for poor and there's a challenges for the rich there are very diverse challenges there is a very uncomparable challenges which both the groups are facing today right so the poor obviously the poverty reduction is one of the basis of the disaster risk reduction and when we have to talk about the rich whether it is in the form of a well planned settlement well planned city obviously it is been organized well and uh, whether it is in a building whether it is in a city one also has to look at in what conditions the city has been planned and what would be the impact not only today but how it will make an impact after 100 years as well so this is a important setting how the four planning has to be uh, taken care of we are also living in the state of wars we are living in the state of contestations that is where the example of nicosia you know how a city is broken into two countries it belongs to two countries one is the turkish republic of north cyprus and the uh, greek part of the cyprus which is in ecosia and the left cosa in the north and in this conditions obviously how to channel the services how to have a holistic understanding of drr you know whether it is a natural made or a man made disasters how we need to have bring that consensus these are some of the challenges which we have and uh, uh, the great people like lorry baker who actually worked with the poor and especially developed the low cost technologies how we can actually work uh, with the local masons how to train the local masons so these are all some of the uh, bottom up approaches of uh, how we can engage these communities how we can uh, you know develop some indigenous methods to construct so this is one of the idea 
But then the same aspect we also have to look at the long run adaptation of these efforts like for example in Changalchula what you can see is what Lori Baker have designed on the right hand side but what the communities have developed their own initiatives later on and today one have a very great difficulty even finding out the locating what the Lori Baker have designed exactly. So this actually shows that there is also some gap between what the architecture on that day have vision made a vision and today how communities have responded to it. Maybe due to various schemes coming into the practice, maybe due to the various financial inflows and maybe various needs and demands coming into the. So I think this is all a very complex phenomenon. Similarly, some NGOs like Hunar Shala where uh, they are also organizing various summer training courses for the people and students of architecture that how one can learn with the communities you know. So being with the communities and, and working with the communities it also benefit not only the student who is there and learning interacting with the outside world it will also benefit the community it will reduce the cost it will uh, um, you know certain there is a win-win situation in both the aspects. That is what till now I was talking about how our design methodology and the teaching has been progressed from a singular vision to a shared vision. So this is where we started about engaging our students you know like even addressing the diversity of people. When you are planning something it is not just a common man for a common man you are planning how you are going to plan for. Uh, differently able people, whether it's for your children, whether it's the old age people, whether it's a blind person, whether it's a physically challenged person. So, so we used to do some kind of uh, workshops where people realize the essence of and the importance of other diversely able people, so that one can understand what are their needs. You know, that is one important sensitivity we tried to do with that process. And also in my own study we did the mental maps and our, that also some of the techniques we have adopted, some of the students have adopted in taking the mental maps and how to analyze the mental maps and what are the different ways one can take the mental maps. So these are all some of the uh, learnings which we have passed on through our, our learnings to the next generation. So that in fact when I was a student no one have taught me about what is a mental map. But then when in my research when I learnt it then I obviously tend to pass it on to my students and then my students have developed in a different innovative manner in different contexts and they have taken it in a different way. So this is how the knowledge have transformed from one generation to the other generation. Like for example he was my Piyush, uh, he was my bachelor student who was doing a thesis in uh, earthquake affected area in Uttarkashi, it's a bound village. So to and it is a small bachelor's dissertation, he was looking at the resettlement of a village and then uh, the way he was looking at it is basically I took him to the uh, village and he developed the community mapping you know they he asked he gave them some maps of the village and then they asked him to how do you understand uh, where are the important problems in this village. So people started mapping it yes this is how we get a lot of water drains out in this rainy season, we get the snow accumulated here, we get uh, there is a um, uh, dilapidated buildings in this. So you know that way communities also do possess some understanding of their own vulnerabilities. The second aspect which we also try to do was in that level he also mapped out various conditions of the house and the whole settlement various social hierarchies like whether it's a JAT community, whether it's a scheduled caste community, you know that is how and how they are segregated and how they are integrated. So all these things were worked. For instance then in terms of the individual layout, he tried to make some kind of small blocks and then try to interact with the community and people say that yes I want uh, you know a toilet outside of it and I want a place for, uh, for the cattle to, uh, to raid the cattle and Interestingly is one of the important finding also was uh, they were not happy to have an, another social community in front of their house but they were happy to have the back side of their house. But then we can see a possibility from the designer the moment if you keep them in front obviously there are possibilities that there some disputes might occur. But when the moment you keep in the backyard at least in that process long run interaction may, can develop maybe in a, 
long time, long run process. And also, we have to make them the students aware of the adaptation process. Because when we talk about the disaster, it is not just only the event, it is not only about the relief, it is not only about the rehabilitation, it is not only about the reconstruction, but it is also one has to understand how communities have changed their dwellings to how they are modified according to their cultural needs. This is a toilet converted as a puja room. This is standardized dwelling converted back to the traditional forms. And this is where an architect can understand the whole build back better with a cultural approach. That is what Amos Rappaport once said, environments are thought before they are built and design tribes. However, imperfectly to reach some ideal embodied in an image, schemata or a model. And like this is another discussion I did also explain in one of my lecture on the Kiruna, the moving Kiruna where there is a mining town and people are uh, relocated, the whole town is getting relocated. But now looking at the digital tools now with the VR, the virtual reality, so one can see that uh, now people are making the planning even by sitting at a desk, you know, by the tools have been uh, operational and how this particular uh, city could be planned, the highway program could be planned. So that is where people are getting a different notion. Anyone can become urban planners. How is it possible? You know, this is, so one has to understand the ground realities, the demographics of it, the sociology of it, the economics part of it, the infrastructural aspect, the procurement aspect, so many other things. It is not just only from the, the virtual reality which one can look at it. There's many, uh, the, because the technology is moving, earlier it was all made with the hand tool technologies, now after some time they moved on to the ha machine tool technology and now the, uh, the condition have moved to the information tool technology. So it is focused more on the form generation. And today what we are dealing with the houses, with the housing, with the city development or whatever we are urban design, we are all doing with the same softwares. Whether it is a peasant house, whether it is an industrialist house or it is only with the templates which we are getting from these softwares, we are trying to apply it. But there is also how much a student is learning with these templates is a big question. Because when he was interacting earlier in the physical form, he was, unable, he was able to see what kind of trees, what kind of flora, what kind of fauna. Even a smell of flower makes a big difference. When we talk about the curriculum part of it, the no, Asraf Salama talks about two sets of pedagogic approaches, mechanist pedagogy and the systematic pedagogy. Here we talk about the schools, curriculum, grades, subjects, courses, lessons. But then here also the same thing, but it, here what it is very important is how are they relevant to the society. And in terms of assessment, you know, we talk about the assessment to increase the quality, not just only grading them like a C plus or C minus. It's not about the judging, but it is assessing to increase the quality, how we can enhance their skills further. This is where a teacher has to look at, even when teaching the disaster risk reduction, how we can bring certain thought process so that he can understand the disaster context and the build back better context. There is also another problem in many of the developing countries, of course, in, uh, it is common. Is it true just most penguins believe it? So students tend to believe that some master have developed and they tend to believe that it is true. So I think we need to also develop certain critical approaches of questioning each and everything and that makes a thought process. If there is a river and there is a settlement you are designing, then a student can start thinking about, can I construct here? What happens when a flood comes? What happens to what level the flood comes? Then what, where should I move? Do I get any land from this? So these are like the brainstorming questions, you know, so it is not just only let's say you say a rule says you have to do this, then you have to critically question it. This attitude has to be developed further. As I said to you, in the education process, we learn by part by part. But it is very important that how a system works together when it is all connected and interconnected. They are dependent and interdependent with each other. This 
what I talk, a settlement is not just a thing, it is a system of things. Whether it is an underlying topography which has created the flora and ecological dimension of it, the flora and fauna, and then you got the public space network which might change in a millennia. You have the plots and the centuries and then blocks and then you have the buildings and then the intermediate levels. Unfortunately, many of the architects, they try to orient only this level or maybe at a planner's dim. We also need to, in a disaster context, we need to see how this vertical understanding goes and inform the macro level understanding to the micro level understanding, and the micro level to the macro level. So we need to have that kind of interface. Here I want to also bring some theory of H.D. Chaya, how he talks about the self-development aspect from a part to whole relationship. In, a, in an education, we teach about subjects, but we also teach, it's very important to teach about the uh, self-responsibility, how they realize themselves, how an I is interacting with the whole world, you know. So the moment he is born, he is related to his family, he is related to his gender, he is related to his caste, he is related to his neighborhood. Okay, so in that way he is related to this town, he is related to his state, he is related to the much more macro level nation and as well as the universe. So if something happens here, will sh he should not be bothered. If something happens in China right, or in Nepal, don't you think he will not, he will just ignore it. So this is where the sensitivity has to understand that you know, everything starts with I. It is not just only I have to be happy, but if we, you, they, that attachment process also has to be part of the integral education. Because I is always perceived through time and space. And time and space are constantly changing. The moment he is traveling in different places, the moment he is growing up, his, but then, it says there is only I and change which are constants. And this uh, Chaya calls it as a kind of uh, the architectural process of the world, the process of ordering time, space and forms. This process is called Panchi Karan and becoming a world where the man is a micro reflex of the universal totality at all the existence levels of idea, process and medium of macro level universe. So it starts with I and how your responsibility goes back to a much more macro level is very important. And that is where your roles, you know, how this I, myself and me and how your roles with like the body and mind, how your relationships and how as your role plays like an explorer, as an observer, how it keeps interchanging with it and how the attributes you know, so this whole thing is a very theoretical concept, uh, though I am not going in depth of it, but at least um, one has to understand that the God's universe is complete only with man, without him it is incomplete. So which means we are the cause for everything, you know, whether it is the nature of a disaster, the cause for a disaster, it starts with I, we will be responsible for everything, right. Without us, the concept of disaster cannot be understood. So, in an education process, there are three things. One is the cognitive aspects and the psychomotor aspects and the affective aspects. So, cognitive is talking about the mental uh, capacities, which talks about the skills and the knowledge which you learn through the brain. And whereas the psychomotor of how you learn through the hand, and the affective which you learn, which goes into your heart, you know, which has some value of your education. There are a lot of taxonomies which has been developed. Uh, Bloom's taxonomy is one of it. Bloom's have developed uh, 1956, where there is a lower order to higher order, where evaluation was on our peak. But in 2002, he brought the synthesis and then the creation into the top in the summit. And now, in the present generation of architecture, we are talking about not only the digital forms because of various fabricated models where technology has been advanced and also we are looking at the digital processes as well. But in this process, what we are missing is the ground realities. 
In fact, there are many models like cat simulation models, like this is one of my students work where they try to simulate the lighting aspects and as well as uh, you know the climatic aspects of it. So, in this process you know when you do a design when you have to test back how it works in this context. On a simulation level, yeah maybe it will give you some hint, but one also has to see from how he will document it and how he will take it further. And in an architectural education it is a five year course and where it starts with a fundamental foundation, elaboration, integration, advanced specialization and the last three E's exploration, evaluation and experience. Here you start with the small things, basic knowledge of it and then you try to elaborate on further but here this is where we integrate structures, construction, quantity pricing, the financial aspect. So, we start in integrating and then we move on to the advanced specialization, you know your focus will be oriented. But in the teaching, you know it is not just about what you teach, how much they have learned. This is assess that how, it is not about how much you have thought, but how much they have learned is more important. I have taught Snoopy to whistle, but I cannot hear him whistle. I said I taught him not he had learnt. So, this is where the gap has to be analyzed. And also this is one of the thesis of uh, Vishal, one of my students and uh, he developed a Rohingya refugees uh, shelter as a project and you can see the handmade drawings of his work and the moment person is touching his pencil and drawing on the board, it will give him more time to think about the details he is working. If it was a digital thing what happens is mostly they try to copy and paste from different aspects of it. Of course, if you are drafting in design then that makes a difference, but here they will have some sensitivity of the scale and the proportions and you know th this is what I can s see that their imagination also comes into the picture. Today because of the various tools which we are doing, we are having many tools like were the CAD simulation tools and the energy efficiency orientation. Today we are not having anyways uh, the final year students are not at all using their hand skills which they learned in first year but eventually they forget about it. You know this is one problem and also the site interactions become very less and they mostly end up in sitting on a table and uh, drafting things you know. I think this is very important that you have to make interact with this process of digital interaction uh, and along with the site interaction knowing the realities. For instance, when any US uh, admission procedure uh, when they get a portfolios from all around the world, every portfolio looks more or less the same because they are all developed by the same tools and same uh, processes you know. So, then that way the diversity and the context has not been addressed. And this is where how the tools, the digital tools are also conditioning your thinking and your understanding process and also your design ability as well. Now the one of the useful tools which have come up with the geograph spatial information technology, the GIS tools where you can see uh, from one of my uh, students work of uh, the hazard lands because the satellite imagery plays an important role. But now to what extent we have to include that satellite imagery at a BR level or B plan because they deal with a much more of a larger scale projects of city planning or the regional planning. For them GIS is already within the subject in the curriculum. So, in that way it was helpful for them to get the, the drain layouts and as well as the hazard landslide intensity maps. So, that will give you an overall regional understanding as well. Also, the GIS is one of the useful tool, but one has to know that what scale you have to apply and what scale um, the macro level scale to the micro level scale, how one can understand. The moment it goes to your site level, how this information would be useful, that, I think that is where the gap comes in between. So, when we say about the psychomotor skills, we also have demonstrated by with the help of uh, Indira Gandhi Rastri Manav Sangralai in Bhopal, uh, this is a disaster shelter which has been built by Erukula tribe in three hours time. So, we brought them, procured the material, we collected the various laborers from different parts of Andhra and then we brought them here and we demonstrated and in this process what happened is students have learned that even a lightweight hut can be made in three hours, you know which is very quick. 
so uh, that has given it's very indigenous but one has to learn that skill also when i was a student in oxford my faculty have taken us to the center for alternative technologies to test various technologies the local technologies you know how we can make it work so this is all the hands on training which will remain in the student's mind forever also when i was doing my research i used to engage some of the br students along with me i used to take them to the villages and uh, they used to interact with the villagers they used to interact with various council development activities and you know the lot of discussions living with the villagers and knowing their difficulties and that has really opened a third eye for them you know before that they were all imagining a different context when they started interacting with it it was a very different experience and for them and similarly some of the things what i also developed is uh, we have so much of information to read but how much to read and how to synthesize it is a very important aspect unfortunately for each course there is a lack of reading materials for drr and build back better and this is a very great need that we need to develop by topic by topic so what i try to do is i used to give them different topics within the groups and then let them compile a lot of information on it and then at the end of the day i compile as a reading material like this was a subject on climate conditions in sweden so in that way i have given a, a wide variety of topics which is falling under that and then at the end of the day we do a kind of big poster putting all this reading material understanding in one big poster of it this is another important technique which we played this is on role play for drr so here for b plan students in spa bopal what we did was we given them a task of a disaster context whether it is a village under the dam and a flooded area and then we given them make them into small groups and then we uh, made into like community engineers planner architect ngos district collectors so there is a decision making there is a user group there is a provider group there is a technical group so all these people will actually discuss the real aspects of it in a virtual understanding in fact it was very important to see how even students have developed a model and brought to me that how oh, this is how we want to propose and this is where they counter argue with the director and how they can establish the funding mechanism how they will establish the cooperative between community and the technical providers you know this is all things have been discussed because when you imagine yourself in a different shoe obviously you think of many other practical situations and this was one of the successful which uh, i can see there is another uh, concept which i have used for teaching build back better is um, i used to give them two two people in a group and then uh, one chapter for the build back better michael leons and theo sheldonman's work and then i ask them to read and analyze and make a critical review of their understanding so then what i do is i try to first this is the build back better and i leave this as an empty part first i don't fill this so this is the skeleton i give them and then i give them each of them a segment of the this is my blackboard actually so whatever the discussions we are getting what they learnt i try to ask them to summarize in this part so the moment they are summarizing then i ask them to keep what are the key words which are informing this so in that way you can see a very important keywords of security adaptation traditional knowledge you know all these things are coming into the picture which is informing the build back better you know that is how i try to put and then we ask them a big poster in that process what happens is the people who don't just study the chapter and forget it they will summarize it they will portray it and it becomes a memory for them now if you look at all the circle here these are all various tools what we learnt whether it is an insurance whether it is the participation and all these things so similarly the end of the workshop will be like this so and more importantly i try to cover different geographical positions like kenya pakistan australia or turkey china you know the variety of geographic conditions lima peru so how they have adopted how they have faced what kind of tools they have used what are the successful things what is not so this is how uh, i was trying to develop various methods 
And obviously, these are all my trial and error process. I am also learning. And whatever I did and what I felt was more successful was uh, some of the tools. And here, this, the cognitive and affective and the psychomotor skills I tried to address in a balanced way because it is not just only by theories and concepts you put it on word and uh, or even the software tools plugging in it, but how one can actually critically look at it in a uh, one is by time wise how they look at it and by management perspective how they looked at it and an integrated perspective how they look at it you know and a learning perspective at the end of the day so this is what i want to present about how to teach build back better thank you very much